Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So if this kind of syntax seems familiar to you, you're really going to enjoy this video. So first of all, if you're coming from a machine learning background and looking to make way into deep learning, this library called Scorch will prove to be really useful for you. What this is all about. So if you look at a syntax, it seems like a classical machine learning algorithm implemented in sklearn or scikit-learn. But this right here is a neural net classifier based on PyTorch module wrapped around a very special library called Scorch which enables you to write scikit-learn like code for deep learning algorithms. Just as you would declare a model and call model.fit on any machine learning algorithm, you can do the same with deep learning models and you you'll automatically get the callback validation accuracy, duration, and all the details. You don't have to write your own accuracy metric and all of that. So this library might come real handy when you're trying to experiment with multiple neural networks. So you can build many neural networks without having to write your own accuracy metrics, uh, without having to write your own uh, epochs. So basically, this provides all the functionality of PyTorch, all the customizability, but with the familiar syntax of sklearn. So let's just dive right into the library. So. Here's the official GitHub page of the library. So it says that a scikit-learn compatible neural network library that wraps PyTorch. All right, so how do we install this? Well, it's a pretty straightforward syntax uh, to install using pip. So you can usually write pip install scorch. And I'm gonna cover uh, this official code, official documentation. This is the official documentation, by the way. So I'll cover half of it or the basic stuff. In the next video, I'll, I'll cover more advanced stuff such as callbacks or grid search. I'll try to make sure this video lasts no longer than 10 minutes. So I'll quickly read this out. Scorch is designed to maximize interoperability between sklearn and PyTorch. The aim is to keep 99% of flexibility of PyTorch while being able to leverage most features of sklearn. So this is what I'm talking about. So it has all the customizability of PyTorch. You don't have to make trade-offs between customizability and you know ease of use. So we get both the things, best of both worlds, right? So let's just get started with the code. Uh, you learn this to import basic libraries and just have to uh, the manual seed basically make sure that we get the same result. Now I've already run this, uh, you have to run this part to install Scorch in Colab, but I've already done that. So let's proceed. All right, so first of all, we'll uh, make a toy binary classification problem and uh, then we'll try to solve the problem using PyTorch's neural networks. All right, so let's import numpy and make classification function. So what this make classification function takes as an arguments are uh, the number of data points, the number of features, the number of informative features and random state. By default, it ret it makes a binary classification problem. So if you want to check this out, you can just basically, uh, <coughs> let me just run this. So if you want to know what any function does or read the documentation about it, just run this and okay, so you get this. Now, let me just quickly show you. So by default, n classes is set to do. So that means it will make a binary classification problem. So you can read the entire documentation and also the code right here. So this is it. Okay. Now let's proceed further. So we have got our X and Y's. Now declare a classifier module, which is basically a neural network that extends nn dot module of PyTorch library. So this is a simple neural network and I'm not going to cover it in detail, but I'll just show you what it does. So first of all, it will declare a few variables that is number of units, nonlinearity, which is by default set to ReLU and drop out. So it basically uh, passes this input to two nonlinear or two dense, dense layers of neural network, applies nonlinearity and finally, uh, finally applies softmax on to the output and then returns that. So this is it. And now we have this class. Now we'll wrap this around Scorch. So here is the uh, here, here's where we'll start using Scorch. So there's that. Now let's just import from Scorch import neural net classifier. So this is a neural net classifier. It takes a module that is neural network module that we've already declared and some other properties, some other parameters such as max epochs, learning rate and device. So I have turned on GPU on Colab. If you don't have GPU, just comment this line out and you're good to go. Now finally, we don't have to write our own accuracy metric or callback functions or our loops. We can just call net.fit with x and y and it should work. So 
so it's a it's it's a very simple network so it won't take a lot of time so that's why we have got this result here we have got 20 epochs the maximum number of epochs for 25 uh, 20 and uh, we have the train loss validation accuracy validation loss and duration so by default it has split the data into train and validation set so by default it has made 80 by 20 split so 20 percent is saved for validation so this is it so you don't so we, we have we have basically eliminated the need for calculating accuracy or splitting the data manually and all of that so it has removed all of that the abstraction from the background so this is this is the power of scotch library that's why i'm really enjoying working with this okay now finally we can make predictions so there are two ways in sklearn you might call predict or predict probability predict will directly give you the result or predict probability will give you the probability so here we can see both of them in action so okay so here we get the result that is the label 0 or 1 and here we get the uh, the probabilities of it being 0 or probability of it being 1 so as you can see probability of being 0 is more so the resultant will be 0 so you can use both ways now let's work on a regression problem okay so again we'll import make regression and we will have x and x regression and y regression as the resultant of make regression function again thousand uh, data points having 20 features 10 informative features well we'll basically change the data type and reshade the data and finally let me just run this and now again we'll define our regression module so which again is a simple neural network so i won't go into detail you can declare that right you are familiar with pytorch and finally from scorch we'll import neural net regressor again the same syntax again i will just uncomment this line because we are using cuda library and what we can do is again call net regression regressor dot fit x regressor and y regressor okay so here again we have successfully executed this and we have train loss and validation loss we don't have accuracy because this is a regression problem now again you can predict using the same syntax which i have done right here now finally we can save and load model in a much simpler way as compared to pytorch so we can directly load models in pickle so import pickle and we can dump the entire net directly net is the classify classification object the classifier object right here net is the neural net classifier so we can dump di that directly and we can open it by using pickle.load syntax now if you want to save only model parameters what we can do is there is another uh, handy functionality called net.save parameters and it takes the file name again loading the model parameters is as simple you can just call dot load parameters and the file name so this is really handy so i guess i'll just end this video here this was the basic of the scorch library now we'll cover more advanced topics such as callback functions grid search and we'll use sklearn learn pipeline and all of that in the next video and in after that we'll start building our own custom callbacks in the more advanced topics so i guess well, this is the most underrated library i've ever come across this should gain more traction because this is really good this is the standard syntax of sklearn with interoperability and customization of pytorch well it's just like the best of both worlds as i've already said in the beginning of the video so i'm really excited about this series so thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and if you don't want to miss the next one goodbye